Hebrews 4.16 tells believers in Jesus that we should come boldly into God's throne room of grace in order that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Have you ever thought about the fact that the Bible actually describes what God's throne room looks like? Did you know that the Bible actually gives us a glimpse of what's going on in heaven right now? That is what we're talking about today on That You May Know Him. You know, sadly today, there are many people out there that say that heaven does not exist. That it's just imaginary, a made up place. Even some people who claim to believe the Bible say that heaven's just a metaphorical place. It's just a metaphorical thing. It's meant to sort of give us hope for future better days, but no place called heaven actually exists in reality. Guys, heaven does exist in reality. It's a place where beings and where people are right now. And in Revelation chapter 4, John, the apostle of Jesus, who was on an island, a prison island called Patmos, had a vision wherein the resurrected Lord actually appeared to him and invited him to get a glimpse of heaven, particularly God's throne room. That very same throne room that Hebrews chapter 4 invites us to enter into by way of the Spirit, by way of our hearts, every time we go to the Father for help in time of need. Today, we're going to actually read through most of Revelation 4 very quickly and catch the description that John offers to us by way of the Holy Spirit of what heaven looks like and what is happening right now in the throne room of grace. Now, before we jump in full throttle, I think it's important to point out this one thing. Many people make a point of saying, hey, the vision that John received in the book of Revelation is about the future. In other words, what John saw when he got to look into heaven is what would be going on in heaven during the great tribulation. Now that is absolutely true. However, before those scrolls start to be opened in the book of Revelation, John catches a glimpse of what's simply going on in the throne room, of what's happening. So in other words, John sees heaven both during the great tribulation and before the great tribulation. In other words, we can trust that what's recorded in Revelation 4, which is simply a description of heaven, of the throne room, is reliable and has much to do with what's going on in heaven right this very moment. Revelation chapter 4, starting in verse 1, goes like this. Remember, this is John who's writing down the vision that he's receiving from the Lord Jesus Christ. It goes like this. After this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. Remember, the book of Revelation features the risen Christ appearing to his disciple John, the Apostle John. At this point in time, John was a very, very old man. He hadn't seen his master in years, maybe 50, maybe even 60 years had passed since the last time John had actually seen the Lord Jesus. But back in chapter 1, Jesus spoke to John. He was standing behind him, and John immediately recognized the voice, and he said the voice of Jesus sounded like the roar of many waters. Now, in chapter 4 of the book of Revelation, that same voice is speaking to him, only this time John describes it as a trumpet. I heard speaking to me like a trumpet, the first voice. And he said, come up here and I will show you what must soon take place. Okay, let's keep going. 
Verse two, at once I was in the spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Guys, it should come as no surprise that the first thing John sees when he gets into heaven, when he looks through heaven's door, is a throne. It is the throne of God sitting right there front and center in the middle of heaven, smack dab center stage. And who is it that's sitting on the throne? None other than the eternal one himself, the Lord God Almighty. Now look, the Bible says very clearly that no one has ever seen God, but that the Son of God has made him known. He's shown him to the world. Well, look, when we take the whole counsel of Scripture together, when we put everything together, what we see is that there are people who have seen God in various forms, right? Moses actually saw something of the Lord God Almighty. John here sees something of the Lord, the eternal one. But you see, he can't really describe any details about him at all. Everything that John sees from here on out, he's able to describe very, very clearly and with a significant amount of detail. But when it came to the everlasting one, the one who was seated on the throne, all he can do is start talking about colors. Colors. What do I mean by that? John starts comparing the one seated on the throne to precious stones like Jasper and Carnelian. And around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Guys, Jasper is a very clear, precious stone, very clear, almost like a crystal. Clear or bright white. Carnelian is like a red-orange, another very rare, translucent almost, but bright colored stone. And then there's a rainbow around the throne where the Holy One is seated. But it's not just like any rainbow. It's an emerald rainbow. Emerald is another precious stone that's bright, shining green. So what do we have? The eternal one, the Holy One, the one seated on the throne is light emanating forth from the throne. It's bright, white, like crystal, like like diamond colored light, along with orange and red and green tones. What is John seeing? He's seeing God, but all he sees is unapproachable light. Make sense? Let's keep going. Starting in verse four, Revelation chapter four says this, around the throne were 24 thrones. And seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. Guys, what does John describe next? After looking at the eternal one, this unapproachable light that's seated on the throne, he says that around the throne are 24 individual thrones with 24 elders seated on them and that they're clothed in white, meaning they are righteous. They have been washed in the blood of the lamb. Now look, some people like to say that these elders are probably angels. I personally don't agree with that interpretation. And the main reason is because angels appear all through the book of Revelation and they always appear as angels. Angels are angels and elders are elders. I think it's much more likely that these elders are actually people who represent both the saints of the Old and the New Testaments, the people of God, both from the Old and New Testaments or New Covenants. This makes sense when you consider the fact that in Revelation chapter 21, we see that the new Jerusalem, a city that will exist one day in the future, is a city that has 12 gates. And on the 12 gates will be written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel, one on each gate. It also will be a city that has 12 foundation stones. And on the 12 
foundation stones will be written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. That's what Revelation 21 tells us about the new Jerusalem that's coming one day. This makes sense when you consider what the Bible says about the church itself. It's built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. So I think it's more than likely that these elders are actually saints who represent the people of God throughout all of time. A few more details from these verses that we don't want to miss. Guys, it says that coming forth from the throne of God are flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder. What does that mean exactly? This is simply showcasing the fact that God is the source of all true power. Nothing in all of the universe, in all of creation, is powerful to the point that God is powerful. And all other powers are subject to him. He is the source of all true power. And this is evidenced by the fact that when you behold his throne, you see lightning flashing and you hear thunder rumbling. And you can bet that if you see lightning flashing forth from the throne of God and you hear thunder rumbling, man, you're definitely going to see it and you're going to hear it, if you know what I mean. You're not just going to see it and hear it. You're going to see it and you're going to hear it and you're probably going to feel it rattling in your bones. Last thing, guys, there are seven torches burning before the throne of God. And it says in Revelation 4, 5, that these seven torches are the seven spirits of God. Who are the seven spirits of God? Well, guess what? We made a video about this time last year about the seven spirits before God's throne, because these are also mentioned in Revelation chapter one. If you want a biblical interpretation of who the seven spirits before God's throne are, check out that video. The link will be in the show notes, and it's also on the homepage of our YouTube channel. Last few verses here, guys, of Revelation chapter four, picking up in verse six, it says this, and around the throne on each side of the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with the face of a man, and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Guys, we're going to have a separate video coming out really soon. It'll also be a podcast episode specifically about these four living creatures, who they are, what their purpose is, and what they represent. These deserve enough sort of attention on their own, and so we're going to do that in the very near future. So keep your eyes open on our YouTube channel and keep checking out our podcast for that episode to be coming out soon. But let's keep going here real quick to finish this. The four living creatures, day and night, never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne, and that's always, by the way, day and night they're doing this, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created. Guys, I think the most important thing we can take away from this little glimpse of heaven that we get here in Revelation chapter four is this. Look, we all know that we're saved by grace through faith. That is an essential message an essential doctrine of the Christian faith. We are saved by grace through faith. A lot of people, though, talk about the rewards and the crowns 
and all the sort of treasure that we're stockpiling up in heaven. Jesus is the one, after all, who said, don't store up treasures on earth, store up treasures in heaven, where moth and rust don't corrupt, where nothing can be stolen. The Apostle Paul tells us that all of our works, one day when we get to heaven, when we're standing before God's judgment seat, all of our works will be tested. The ones that don't stand the test will be discarded and forgotten. And the ones that do stand the test will stand for all of time. And we will be rewarded for those good works. People talk about crowns and rewards when we get to heaven all the time. And that's good. The Bible talks about those things. But what does Revelation 4 say? Night and day, these four living creatures are worshiping God. And the people who are around his throne remove the crowns from their heads and cast them before the throne. And they say, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. In other words, even the rewards, even the crowns that God gives to his faithful saints in heaven, you know what we're going to do with them? We're going to offer them right back to him in praise and in thanksgiving. Because we will know fully and completely, more than we even know right now, that he is the one who is completely worthy. He is the only one who is worthy of all the praise, of all the glory, of all the power. And our life then, just as it should be now, will be about giving him the glory and the honor and the praise that he so deserves. Well, guys, that is the glimpse of heaven of the throne room of God that Revelation chapter 4 offers us. There's actually more that takes place in heaven as you journey through the book of Revelation, and there's actually other glimpses in the Bible of heaven and even of God's throne room. Some of them are in the Old Testament. Do you know where they are? We're going to make videos very, very soon that covers those passages as well. And at some point, we'll keep journeying through Revelation and get to what else it says about what is going on in heaven. But for now, that's all we've got. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll check back in in a few weeks when we release a video about the four living creatures who are before God's throne. And as always, guys, if you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button on your way out the door. Consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Your support means a ton to us. The That You May Know Him podcast is available on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Pods, or wherever you listen to podcasts. So please consider subscribing to us there, leaving us a rating and a five-star review on iTunes. Guys, our podcast is often completely different than what we do here on YouTube. So we have multiple platforms, and we're constantly, weekly, bringing you an assortment of wonderful biblical Christian content. That's it for now. I'm Blake Barbera signing off. Thanks so much for watching. That you may know him. Stay blessed, live loved, and I will talk to you next time.